they want to do the shape for this, and that is very important to the first stage of your basic pattern drafting for the bodies. Now, we are drafting the bodies in the same order as you have been learned how to do it. So now it's to do the shape bodies. So the first thing you need to now add up to do your shape bodies is we have the true bust line for the front, which is what's here below the underarm front squared across to the center front. Now you're going to repeat the same thing to get the true bust line of the back. So I'm going to measure from the underarm point of the back the same 4 cm. You got it? Why the center back is going to be 2 cm. Which means that the true bust line of the back is always slanted. 4 cm. Why we have 2 cm at the center back, then you connect it with your ruler. After that is done, the next thing you need to add up to this shape of this process is to do center back shaping on the waistline. On the waistline of the back, we are going to measure 2 cm in. This is constant for all body size. 2 cm. Once you measure 2 cm in, Connect it to the back line. Let's spray for that. And connect from this same point to the hip line. Once this is done, you realize that after doing the shaping of the back, these parts of the back no longer existing as it has been cut off based on the shaping. So now, having done all this, it's now important for us to also have two other measurements that was not included in the basic bodice draft. And the two measurements that you need to have now is the underbust length. This is the measurement that is measured from the NP point in front towards the first part of the bus going through. You have to follow the shape of the bus. Relax the tape measure on the underbust. Then when you get to that point, that's going to give you the underbust length. For this draft, underbust length is 39 cm, while the underbust round is 84 cm. Now, from your hand feet, measure the new underbust length that you have measured, which is 39 cm. So, this is my 39 cm. Measure it the square feet across. 39 cm. I'm measuring that from the top line. I have included my other post length, which I made from the hand P to this point, and I squared it across to the center back line. So I have all the distance measurements in place the bust line, which I will actually take on the true bust line, the under bust line, the waistline, and the hip line. Now, for us to be able to get a shape of bodies, you have to understand that for you to have a perfect shape bodies draft, you also need to uh, understand that. This shape of this is actually done or um, applied so that you can actually control excesses that are on the pattern. So now the next thing for us to do, I haven't done all this line, is for us to measure what we have on the true bust line of center front. You write it out. I will do the same thing on the center back. I do what I have from this point to this point. I write it down and I repeat the same process for the under bust, the waist, and the hip. So here I go. I start from any point, any on So for what I have on the bust line of the back is this. So now I have here 25.5. I will measure what I have on the true bust line on the front. Here yeah, I have um, 30.5 cm. Now I come to the under bust line, measuring from here. Now, I can't have access to this place again because eventually it's going to be cut off, so it's no longer existing as part of the draft. Now, I'm going from this point to where we have this dart, which is this point here. Then you would jump it. I have here 8.3 cm. Then I'll jump, continue from the 8.3 cm on the other side, so I get here now I have 23.5. 23.5. I would also measure what I have in front. Here I 
have 29.5 hour jump to that, then continue my measurement. Again, I have 28 cm. Now I'll do the same thing for the waistline. 7.3, I have 22 cm for the back. This is 18.5, omitting the that, I have 26.3. 26.3 cm. So now do the same thing on the hip line. This is 30.3. Now for the front, we have 31.3. Now let's add together what we have on the full bust line for front and back. So 30.5. Was 25.5 that's going to give us 31 plus 25 that will give us 56 cm so we are going to write here 56 cm as the total measurement of what you have front and back on the floor bus line you will do the same process on your other bus line and the waistline so I have another bus line for the back to 3 points okay now I've done all the calculation adding the front and the back together, I got 56 cm on for the bust line. Uh, for the other bust line, I have added this and this together, I have 51.5, 48.3 for the waistline, and 61.6 for the hip line. Now, for you to not get the difference, because the major importance of the shape of this is for you to be able to compress and eliminate excesses that are realized or discovered while you're trying to put the pattern in better shape. Now, now for you to do it better and have a fast track of getting the excess, you write out this diagram, the weight is written on the board, having your bust, under bust round, the waist and the hip, and you write this column out. This is the column for the actual pattern measurement after adding what you have on each of these lines. I have it here, we have the actual. Now this actual is half of the person's measurement. Now, our actual boss is 103, the waist is 81 and all that. So half of it is what I have in this column. Do you get it now? So all you need to now do to get the difference is to subtract the bigger one from the smaller one and we'll be able to get the excess, which is the difference. I've gotten the pattern, the actual, and the difference. So for the boss line, I have 5.5 as the excess. For the other boss line, I have 9.5 as the excess. For the waist line, I have 7.8. And for the hip line, I have 1.1. Now, all you need to do now to achieve a good shape of this is to share the excess and eliminate them on each line. For the bus, you eliminate the excess on the two bus line. For the other bus, on the other bus line. So now, this is the standard to actually having a good shape of this. Now, we have excess of 5.5. Now, the rule says that you have a choice to eliminate or use all the excess so that there won't be any ease. But it's important that you leave a little as is. Now that we have 5.5 excess for the full bus line, for the bus line, all I will have to do is I will leave 2 cm as the is, then I'm going to share 3.5 cm. Now, how do I do it? Sometimes you can have more share to the front or you can share them equally. But for me, I'm going to share 2 cm on the full bus line of the front. And for the back, from this point, I'm going to share the remaining 1 cm. So 1 cm here, okay, I'm going to do 1.5 here, so that we'll have a total of all the excess. So this is 1.5, while this one is 2 cm. So total of 5.5 excess, and left 2 cm for east, then 3.5 cm for the north. Excess to be taken on the bodies. Now for the other bus line, I have 9.5. I will leave 3 cm, 9.5. I will leave 3 cm for east. Then I will work with 6.5 cm as the excess to be shared. So, how best are you going to share this? Now, it depends on the way the pattern is sometimes, but it's important that because once you do sharing another pattern, that means you are trying to do designs that will actually give a cup fit around the other bus. So you share more on the other bus line. For this side, you want to force to the side seam. You 
we have 6.5. I'm going to do 3 cm here, and I'm going to do 2 cm here. But this sharing method varies based on the person or the measurements you are working on. Now, I shared 3 cm here, 2 cm here, so I'm having 1.5 cm left. So what do I do? I will share 1 cm on this side. Or also share the 1.5. Or sometimes you can also share and leave some to the back. So let me share 1 cm. And I'll share the 0 0.5 cm here. So I think I've exhausted the 6.5 cm I intend to use for the other box. Now for the width, I have excess of 7.8. Now, I'm going to do the same sharing. I'll share 2 cm here. I'll do another 2 cm around here as well. So that's uh, 4. I'll do 1.5 cm here. And I'll do the other here. You know, we have 7.8. So I'm going to be 2 cm as is. Then I'm left with 5.8. So I walked, I measured 2 cm from this point. 2 cm here, that is 4 cm. 1.5 from here, that is what? 5.5. Then you can do the remaining. You see him here. It's very tiny, but that's the option you have. Don't forget that the way I shared mine, you can as well use your own description to share yours as long as you are able to distribute the excess in a very reasonable way. Now, we now have the last one, which is uh, the E plan. We have 1.1 cm. So, most times when you have excess on the E plan, the reason for that is because when you drafted your pattern, quarter of your hips in the front plus a little bit of excess, either 1 cm, 1.5 or 2 cm. But this one has excess of like 1.1, so that's why subtracting it now and compare it with actual and what we have in the pattern, we have excess of 1.1, so I would eliminate the 1.1 on the front totally. So this is 1.1 here, and we'll eliminate it here. So now the next thing to do is to now connect the lines together. Now, take the cut part of your ruler and link place the ruler on the bust line, touching the true bust line. Sometimes when you're having to do this, you have to be very smart with the use of your cord ruler. So I'm doing this, but don't do it in a way that the connection will look funny. You can do the one after the other. So if you have this, Now, I haven't done this to this point. Then you flip your ruler. Let me make it thicker. Now, once I've done this, then you flip your ruler this way. Now, for me to do this, I'm going to connect it to this point. But it's important that when you are connecting as well, you leave connected this one by linking this way, but not the copy part. Then you place your ruler, flip it over, and connect. Then whatever you have connected to the E point, you do the same thing straight down, because it's the same E point that goes down to the full length of the pattern. So now let's connect the one within the pattern. So place your ruler from the upper part of your dart, touching Whatever you have on your underbust, this is what I have on the underbust. Then link it down to this. Do the same thing on the other side. Now, once you have done this, now you can link this middle line downward as well, depending. Now, let's come back to this point X. Place the curve part of your ruler and link from point X, touching the lines you are connected from with that line. Just do this. Now, have in mind that it's the same line that is connecting the two of them. This way, I'm just trying to blend and have a good symmetry of the connection. So now, 
with this we have this place as CF1, which means from this point, this way, this one is for the CF1, while this side is your what, CF2. Just like when you did panel that, and this is going to be giving us or showing a princess that line. Now let's do the same thing for the back as well. Place your ruler this way to touch what you have from the bust line. Then you flip this ruler out this way. And I'm sure that this one doesn't have much thing for us to connect to. Now, since we've done this, then this one brings us to the end of the shape bodies. Now, with this, now we'll be able to shape the bodies to an extent that it is able to actually draw for that design. So from here, either with your own uh, self drafted uh, process or with the help of your instructor, you can also interpret the design you want after the shape bodies have been done. So if you have any other question, you can ask online or you come to class 101 for better explanation. I hope you have a nice day as you do a sample of your own uh, shape bodies for the cost of check.